Hey guys, boy the lighting is beautiful in this shot. I'm Alec Lacasse and today we're going to be carving a juniper log that I've got mounted up here. It's really a beautiful piece of wood, lots of character in it. And I'm going to be, uh, yeah, working on just making this thing really come to life. I'm gonna be doing a portrait. And I'm using a handful of tools, mostly hand, although juniper is definitely best suited for power carving, um, understood. But uh, I don't want to do that. I want to I want to give myself a little exercise today. So I'm going to be doing my best to hand carve this juniper again. So definitely a harder wood than I'm used to working with on a daily basis. But uh, let's get into it. I don't really have an exact idea. I know I want it to be a female portrait of some kind. I haven't done a female in a few days, and uh, a female portrait. And I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling like it's a, a good thing to put into the release this month. Um, so that's that. Yeah. Do the art release or original carving release, as I call it, once a month. And uh, I'm hoping to create something for that. So that's kind of the outlet for this piece. And uh, going to do my best to get into it. All right. So I'm going to try to keep this fairly brief. Don't want to stay on here for too long, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for joining and uh, let's get into it. There's lots of dirt. You can't see the dust, but I can. It's everywhere. I'm carving this. It might not be a bad idea to put to put a mask on, actually, for the initial part. As uh, wimpy as that sounds. I'm gonna throw that on. But I really like the uh, I really like juniper because it has this really beautiful deep like purple color to it. It's just, uh, it's super, super nice. In fact, it's probably one of my top five favorite woods to carve right now. Um, although I carve it very little. Um, I guess it's always been in my top five, not, not just right now. So, but it's very splintery. It's, it behaves a lot like red cedar. Actually, red cedar is, in the, is basically juniper, so there's that. Beautiful grain strike stripes through it. And I think it's gonna make for a really nice sculpture. Oh, <laughs> it's no joke though, guys. It's pretty hard. All right, so uh, let's do it. Get a bigger gouge for this. Got a, what is this, a 20 millimeter number nine? And per usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free. Hey, Chris, um, in the comments below. That's kind of the fun of the live stream. It's just, uh, collaborative. You know, it's a lot more fun than doing a, a video in the studio alone, editing it in the quiet, just having the time with one another is super fun. So I'd love to hear from you. Again, I'm Alec Lacasse. I'm a sculptor of wood, um, stone, and clay. I've been carving as a full-time job for uh, a long time. <laughs> I'm not even sure how long really, but uh, it's hard to say because I didn't always take it seriously. Um, I mean, you know, when you live with your parents and you're 12 years old or 13 years old, it's hard to say whether that counts as like full time. <laughs> um, but I've been pretty serious about it for at least, you know, 15 years or so. Uh, but I've been carving for 17 or 18 years. I'm 29 years old. And uh, I'm in my uh, studio that um, I built when I was uh, I think 24 with the help of a man that I met at an art show. And I'm uh, making some uh, cool carvings, fun, having a lot of fun in here. I had uh, the help of a young man named Sam who's been editing videos for me. And uh, I'm just having a lot of fun. So I'm married to a beautiful young lady. I uh, just got married a little, a little over a year ago. And so that's been a huge uh, source of inspiration for my artwork and um, just a um, huge life improvement. So yeah, that's a little about me, guys. Hey, thanks for the compliment. So yeah, let's make this nice.
Okay, so I'm gonna start thinking a little bit about symmetry. Happy Thanksgiving. So let's say the top of the head is up here, bottom of the head is down here. We're gonna divide this into thirds. Something like, yeah, something like that, let's see. Yeah, so we'll go to the lower line here. So I have to bring that brow ridge up a little bit. I'll take the mask off for now. Most of the dustiest work is done. <laughs> Craig says you're afraid of getting COVID while working on that wood. No, sir. I love watching this come to fruition. Thank you for sharing your talents. Yeah, thank you, Rain. Appreciate it, guys. Ah, uh, yeah, a little cracking happening here in the piece. So I might have to change the center line to accommodate for that. And that's really... Something that happens a lot in green or in uh, found wood carving. You end up having to move the center points. You have to move the design around a whole lot just to accommodate the you know, issues that you face along the way in the material. You kind of have to hold on to your design loosely. Otherwise, you're constantly annoyed. Yeah, thanks, Elaine. Oh, my favorite and first to go on to Facebook. First to go on to Facebook, huh? Unlike uh, painting or portrait, you know, sculpture and other mediums like clay, wood is a different beast. It has a lot more of its own personality, you know? You know, basically a canvas is a canvas is a canvas. Um, you know, barring different types of canvases, of course. But, you know, what's really interesting about wood is it has its own very unique characteristics. And that makes for just a really unique ride. Each piece is different. It's own grain. I mean, my dad's a, a guitar builder. And one thing I've learned from him is that, you know, one guitar, even made by the same company, the same model, can sound so different than the very same guitar, the same model, just because of the wood. And it could be the same tree. It's just that much of a difference being that one cut of the tree or piece of the wood might be from a lower spot where all the sap settles to the base of the tree. Some sections of the wood from higher parts might be lighter, less dense, might sound different. So in the same way, wood from different parts of the tree, even just the same tree can have a unique kind of texture and character quality. And that's honestly part of what makes carving so fun. It has its own uh, Its own unique character qualities, each piece. Uh, yeah, happy turkey day. Hey guys. I may have to remount this one. I can feel it getting loose as I'm carving into it. Let me turn the brightness up on this light here. There we go. Hopefully you can see a little clearer. That, gar that color, that beautiful color shows up there in the wood. 
Ah, uh, yeah. You can see it moving around. It's going to come free here shortly. It's a piece of wood. You know, people always uh, talk to me about using soft wood and hard wood. And what wood can I use? I don't have access to the to the wood that you have at home, the bark. It's like, well, use the, the next easiest material to use. You don't have to have the exact woods that uh, your favorite artist uses. It's more important that you learn to sharpen your tools. Harold says, you sound out of breath. Are you eating too many desserts? <laughs> no. No, no, no. <clears throat> it's all this talking and malleting. You try it, Harold. <laughs> uh. All right, so getting the forms in. There it is. Ha <laughs> ha, it came off. All right, I'm just going to remount it back to the board. And you know, part of it is this, uh, this back is so uneven. I'm going to clean it off a little bit. Just give me a moment. Do it on the floor. Screws didn't have enough of a bite in the back of the wood, so this will be this will be a big improvement. Yeah, better, much better. Well, maybe I have been eating too much dessert, Harold. I don't know. <laughs> it's possible. I do like dessert. Thanks for your patience as I struggle to screw this on. There it is. Beautiful. Have a little bit more of an angle on there, but uh, it's going to hold steady. That's the most important thing. I thought about doing oil painting. Uh, but realized last night it would look like mud. So good ideas from Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> what would your dream would, what is your dream wood to carve? Um, Rain asks. Uh, <laughs> Harold, Harold said I'm getting personal. <laughs> um, dream wood to carve. Oh, well, my assistant and I have been waiting on, uh, no, for the perfect moment to start this video about carving the hardest wood in the world. And the wood is an Australian ironwood. And it's a, it's really a, a beautiful wood, but again, it's the hardest wood based on the Janka scale. And although it might not be my dream wood because of how difficult it'll be to carve, it's probably the one I'm most interested in carving, but I'm kind of saving that for a special video. I'd love to just cut into it on my own and make a carving, but I'm curious about what that's going to look like in the context of the video. I think it's going to be super hard, and I probably won't enjoy it at all. Um, in a sick, twisted way, I'll probably, I'll probably love it, though. So, Hey, from California, Marvella. Hey, William. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Tomorrow is Turkey Day for those of us in the States. It's a very, very special day. It's one of my favorite holidays.
<laughs> that dessert comment still got me going. <laughs> uh, Harold, you got me good there. Uh, Osage Orange Hedge is incredibly hard when dry, but doable if you cut it fresh. Yeah, I think most hardwoods are that way. When you cut them green, they're a lot easier to work. Oh, big flake. Mm. <laughs> Somebody say something about a chip on my shoulder? Oh, yeah. I might glue that back on because I like the frame that this gives the piece. So, yeah, I'm going to glue it back on for sure. I want that rough uh, frame. If you've watched any videos of me carving <laughs> for any length of time and it's not like highly edited, <laughs> you're going to see me breaking something off and gluing it back on. It happens all the time. All the live long day. I mean, it probably happens to you guys too out there who carve every day, right? Pretty common scenario. Can't start whitening for another two or three weeks at Corporal Tunnister. Oh, whittling. Okay. Ah, bummer. Sorry about the uh, issue, William. I didn't mean to get you off your game with a dessert comment. I am overweight and have decided not to eat any dessert during Thanksgiving. Oh, no! Yeah, okay. I was gonna. You scared me there. Okay, I saw the Pinocchio nose lengthening. That's good. Yeah, definitely uh, not worth, not not the right time, Harold. You can't skip dessert. <laughs> it's giving man. Sorry, buddy. You picked the wrong day. That's like going on a fast during your honeymoon or something. <clears throat> yeah, not that I have experience. Trying to get my wife and I to do a, a fast <laughs> on our honeymoon. That's one of the saddest things I've ever done in my life. So. Embarrassing. I still apologize to my wife this day for that. Oh man, this is, uh, this works up a sweat. I'll tell you. Maybe I see why all those people are saying, give me some of that cottonwood bark. This gets tiresome after a while, I bet, huh? This juniper, very, very dry, very, very, uh, a pretty old juniper. I've had it for a couple of, maybe four years. <clears throat> but I mean, it's just beautiful wood. Look at the colors in that. <laughs> this timing sucks, yeah, for the, for the diet. I agree. My first wife went on a fast seven years. Oof, that's a long fast. What kind of a fast is that? How are you doing, Greg? It's a very chippy wood. I've talked with Doug about this at length because you know, he, he tried into an old cedar board a few months ago and said that he just gave up right, you know, within a short period of time. It was just so chippy and it, and it does kind of dull your tools, all the dirt and deposits from the cedar fence post. That's what this is, an old cedar fence post. Or at least that's what I think it is. This actually could be an old uh, root, a juniper root, I'm not positive. But I mean, I see why he didn't enjoy it all that much. It's it's pretty difficult to carve. It's hard stuff. Again, it's awesome to power carve. I think 
Juniper is one of my favorite woods to, to carve the power because it just it behaves very nicely. Um, yeah, you can hand carve it. I mean, it's, it's doable. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it, brother. Let's see if I can get a different angle on it. There we go. Now we can see some detail. Although there's not much detail to see. Again, this is uh, Juniper. How do you know when to go from using a mallet to just pus pushing with the chisel? I have a couple of mallets, but it seems I can't control the chisel as well with a mallet and with pressure. Harold, uh, the, really it's just to save my arms. If I'm pushing a whole lot and it's making me tired, or I need to remove a lot of both material, I'll go with a mallet. Um, it's pretty intuitive for me. It's not like I'm sitting here going, okay, what would be, be best for this next cut? I will say though, I'm not making detail cuts to your point. You know, you have a lot more control with the mallet. So just keep, sorry, with the, the pushing cuts. So just, I guess, keep in mind that you know, you're gonna be using it mostly in the early stages to rough out. And a lot of the detail on your eyes, nose, mouth stuff, at least in, in my case, I'm gonna be using more pushing than, than anything else. <clears throat> Splitting. Some of the splitting is preventable. Just the way I'm shaping the wood, I'm behaving as though it's a softer material. And so I, I'm not getting away with as much as I would otherwise. But uh, so it's really in my hands a lot of the, the chip, chipping. And also the fact that the grain is moving kind of like in an S shape with this whole piece. You can see the outline there. So yeah, it's not color, just I cannot get enough of that. Yeah, it's kind of a workout working on the, with the mallet in the harder woods. this uh, camera pointed in a decent spot. <laughs>
<laughs> Trying to move this light out of my way here so I can see clearly what I'm up to without banging, banging the light. Okay. Ah, big chunk. Big chunks are coming off now. Yeah, with the more brittle wood, you have to start with the stop cut first. Just doesn't like to behave otherwise. Thanks, Har Harold. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh boy. Starting to take shape. Woo! Yee haw! I need to take my long sleeve off though because I'm getting so hot. Woo! Man! Shouldn't have, shouldn't have worked out earlier. <laughs> yeah, you know, it doesn't move as quickly as the really soft woods do, but the reward is so there. I mean, that, that color is just, it's worth, it's worth the extra effort, I think. get enough of that green <laughs> it's just so cool I managed to bump my hand a couple of times I would say, you know, if I put this in one of the categories of woods that I love to carve most, it's not because of the of the way it carves, it's just the color and the smell. It's awesome. How fresh is the juniper? I've got a few logs from a tree I chopped down a couple summers ago. Yeah, this is a few year old uh, juniper. It's pretty dry, actually. It's very, it's very dry. So it's behaving. Uh, it's behaving. 
It's pretty, it's pretty crunchy and chippy. I wish it was fresh or fresher because it wouldn't quite have this uh, the f this fight in it that it has right now. I mean, golly, it's some hard wood. You can smell that. It's just, it's such a nice smell. It'd be very tricky with the way you direct the tool. In this case, I can only go upward on this side and downward on this side, because otherwise I'm going to have chips, breaks. So it's uh, kind of tricky to work with this piece. It's very fickle, this guy is. Starting to define some of the details, outline the shapes with the detail. It's a little premature for the detail, um, and you know, in, in some ways, because you're really kind of like defining exactly where you want everything to be. So I don't know. I wouldn't recommend that if you're starting out that you go from roughing in to using a detail like this. Uh, but I have a pretty good sense of what I want. me. And the reason for that is the V-tool, it, uh, it, it makes an indelible line that the veiner, which is a U-shaped tool as opposed to a, a deep V-shaped tool, um, it'll make a shallower cut and you can therefore like change things around a little bit more easily. So say I want to move the mouth with the veiner, I'm not going in as deep and so I can um, adjust it, but because I kind of know where I want the mouth to be, I don't have to worry about it as much. So, yeah, sometimes you're kind of hunting around for the location of a, of a feature. If you're doing a portrait, especially, uh, of a specific person. But in this case, just having fun and uh, working on a, a portrait of a woman that's kind of loosely based on a, an image that I found here on Pinterest so as inspiration, so. See that I bumped the camera? There it is. The grain is lovely. I'm glad to see it's carving without a mallet. I might try cutting into the log. Yeah, for sure. Definitely give it a shot. So I'm gonna move this over here and try to stay out of the way of it. It's hard to do. I'm just laughing because I'm just thinking back to all the videos I made when I was a kid. Like, we're on YouTube. Not even, not even when I was a kid, just a, few, a couple years ago where I was standing in front of the camera for half the video. Hopefully I've gotten better at that. I'm sure I have. God help me if I'm not. 
and spend about a half hour looking at the back of my head if they could stand looking at the video for more than 10 minutes. If you'd see my head more than you'd see the art. I'm looking, for a specific, I'm looking for a specific tool. I'm not seeing it, but this will work. What kind of finish are you planning? Harold asks. Um, 
a good question. I'm not entirely sure yet. Probably, uh, gosh, with this kind of a wood, you could get away with an oil or a, uh, you know, a poly is probably what I'll end up doing. Ah, a big chunk right out of the lip. That'll force me to go deeper, that's for sure. And then another chip out of the lower lip, which is uh, not always bad. I don't. I used to freak out about stuff like that, but I don't even glue this stuff back on some of the time now. If, it, if I can use it as a, a good exercise to make things deeper, just changes the design, and you make peace with that. Oh no, that smell from the Riffler is awesome. It's making that uh, dust go into the air and just smells so good.
All right. No, it's not a client's request. Liz asks if it's a cl client request. So, mm -mm. no, it is not. Um, This is a p original piece for the original carving release I'm doing um, on my website. This carving and others will be um, available on the first Friday of December. Doing a carving release there. And that's my website, it's aleclacasse.com. So my account name here, if you can see my YouTube handle, that's my website. Alecastmyname.com. Yeah, so juniper usually isn't this uh, difficult or hard to carve, but uh, it's just so dry. And brittle, this particular piece is very hard, so it's making for a challenging carving, but the grain is just, uh, it just makes it all worthwhile, right? You can't, you cannot be upset at that. Beautiful, beautiful grain, so. It's kind of like a baby, you know? They're, they're a lot of work and they're hard to take care of. That's why God made them so cute. God had to really comp overcompensate when he made this wood because uh, for us wood carvers, he knew it would be a pain in the butt. So he said, get some nice grain. I don't know. Sounds are pretty loud. <laughs> I like that everyone's uh, talking to one another on here. In different countries. We've got Indonesian folks listening. People from all over, it looks like. It's cool. Well, guys, I could work on this all evening. I don't want to uh, bore you, and this is going to be a behemoth to upload. So I'm going to call it and uh, look for a little YouTube short on my channel. I'll probably have this one finished up on there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, yeah, if you want to learn to carve realistic faces, check out my online school at Fundamentals of Woodcarving. It's my website. It's alicalcast.com. I'll link it in the description. So check that out. It's an awesome resource if you're interested in learning how to do this. Um, of course, this is 
still pretty early on. There'll be a lot more refining to do. And uh, I've got like 80 plus project videos on carving female faces, male faces, realistic portraits, all that stuff. So check that out for beginner, intermediate, and advanced carvers. All right, bye. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Paul, William, Roland. Thanks a lot of you. Appreciate you watching. And uh, yeah, like, share, ring, hit that bell, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks.